Um, so this is basically a PowerPoint presentation um, where we have to actually custom make this for you, this particular version, because we have no automated way to create slides that are customized to your, um, with your information on them. So if you don't have this presentation yet, please ask your admin for it and they will create your custom version which will have your picture, your content information on it, along with <clears throat> um, along with um, your bio and such. So let's let's kind of go through this. I'm gonna uh, view it now. Um, I'm using PowerPoint. It is created. We did create these in PowerPoint, but um, if you um, do not have PowerPoint, you should still be able to play it from your computer screen, um, a Macintosh computer, um, an iPad, an Android tablet, any of those devices. So let's begin. <clears throat> so I'm going to play it from the beginning. Obviously, this is basically a cover page. And the whole idea here is having um, a presentation like this will really ensure your odds of getting the business because you're going to you're going to show off a lot better than any other agent that might be competing for the business as well as you're just going to overly impress the seller um, so you're going to over impress the seller you're going to win when you're competing and third you will earn enough respect and trust in your abilities with that seller that you're more apt to not have the general objections that we typically see when we do listings. So the two big objections we see when we do listings are what? One is they want to price their home too high. And the other is they don't want to pay for the services we provide. So um, this presentation in itself, when you present it the way I'm going to share it with you. Um, obviously, you need to study it and you need to learn it so you can present it in a fashion that um, gets the word across. Um, but you will um, really lessen these two objections at the end, because um, at the end, that's when you're going to start asking them to agree and sign up with you. So let's go do this um, and we'll begin. <clears throat> So this is a cover. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to talk a little bit about yourself. Um, this screen obviously has a lot of words on it. Um, it's not intended that these that the, the seller is going to actually read all this. But what are they going to capture? What did you capture when you when I flipped to this screen? What you should have captured was the pictures and the um, basically the header um, text, experience you need, ex knowledge you expect, dedication you deserve. <clears throat> so your job is to fill in. When you flip to these slides, you're not going to sit there and read this to them, but you need to know what this says. You need to, um, this obviously has to speak about you and what you do and how you do it. And so you're selling yourself first, and that's most important um, because they have to believe in what you're doing as an individual person to help them navigate the sale of their home. So you need to study this and then summarize it. They're going to capture, and what's going to present in their mind is the illustrations they see and those very um, key sentence or key words at the top of each paragraph. Again, experience you need, knowledge you expect, dedication you deserve. <clears throat> you flip to the next slide, and now you're, you're basically um, presenting the brokerage that you're with and how they play a role in being successful in, in their sale of their home. This is actually already outdated um, when you get the new version. It will no longer say 18 years because we've actually been in business 19 years. Um, we are changing that. It's going to say established in 1999. 
that's when we began that way. Um, it won't have to be changed each year. So it's again, they're going to capture the illustrations. They're going to capture the big bold print. So this says about the brokerage brand you want. So you need to talk about the brand in a way that sells it and uh, gives them a level of trust in it. So the brand you want, um, we're a brokerage. We've been in business since 1999. Um, we have been a top in the industry in the Tampa Bay market in the number of transactions or <clears throat> I'm sorry, you'd say a number of sales that we have closed as a, a brokerage. Um, this is a two page slide. <clears throat> so then you go further. Um, we have five office locations among our brokerage um, throughout the Tampa Bay market. Um, we have 250 um, active real estate agents helping you sell your home. Um, since um, 1999, this brokerage has sold over 14,000 homes or one and a half billion in, in sales volume. Um, so it really states in a big way that we are not new at selling homes. We get them sold. We've sold the most of the Tampa Bay market. And we've done it over 19 years. <clears throat> now we're going to step forward. Um, so you spoke about yourself. You spoke about the brokerage, built some trust in, in yourself and the values of the brokerage. And then you're going to talk about marketing because it's very critical that the um, sellers understand that you have a very strong plan of action that you're going to put into place that's going to help um, ensure that you're going to get buyers that will come through the home and ensure that uh, it's going to get sold. And on top of it, the, what, what does a seller want? They want the most money for their home. So you have an action plan or a marketing plan that's going to get the most buyers to know about the home and, and their attention. So let's talk about that. I'm going to jump back for a minute. I just want to know, is everyone still with me? I just need somebody to comment that they can hear me. Okay, great. Am I doing okay? All right, let's go on. Thank you. <clears throat> um, get the right screen. Okay, so marketing. So marketing is very, very critical in selling a home. Um, and they want to they want to know that you have a, a very strong plan of action. And so when I share this with you, um, I think I would convince you if you are the seller to hire me based on what I'm doing. So think about this and I'm just going to role play it. I'm the agent. You're the seller. If you think about that in your mind, once I go through this and share this with you, would you hire me? when you know that then you realize this is a key element in helping you earn that business and especially if you're competing against another agent from another brokerage um, for the opportunity which that sh should happen on occasion <clears throat> okay so what is it the first thing that's important is in order for you to be understanding on what it takes to or, you know, how to successfully market a product, you need to know where does the buyer shop for the product. So that's the purpose of this slide. So this slide says, hey, sellers, I know where the buyers go to find your home to buy it. And that is, as you can see, significantly, the internet is where consumers go to shop for homes. Okay, so 86% then they're going to be a minimal amount going down from there. You know, they may drive by and see a yard sign. That's actually number two. So a yard sign still got significant value. Um, they may be seeking a, a, a lender doing the steps correctly as a buyer to get a lender, and the lender may refer them to an agent. So that's where that 6% comes from. And then referred by a friend, relative, or neighbor to somebody that's selling their home, visiting open house, 
um, going to a new home builder, <clears throat> looking, here we go, looking at a local newspaper or magazine, 1%. So obviously that type of marketing has not got any significance anymore. Um, you know, already knew the seller, attended a seminar and then other. Um, but the big one here is the internet actually, and then following right behind that is called um, on the yard sign. So those two, if you add that together, is what, 93% uh, of the buyers, that's how they're finding their home, those two in, individual things. So you have to be able to share that with the seller. So the seller says, okay, well, you obviously know where the buyers are going to shop for homes. Now your marketing should fit that as well. So let's continue on. So it says my comprehensive marketing strategy so at this point, I'm going to show you, and, and we call it, in the company, we call it an 18-point marketing plan. Um, <clears throat> okay, so here is um, a number of the things that you're going to do to market their home. Now, I'm going to go through and talk about each one, and that's what you need to do. This version doesn't have any text. It just has a picture and a title. Um, the printed version that I'm going to share, share with you and show you where to get that would go into a binder book for you to dis display on the table in a three-ring binder um, actually has some text below that. That text probably would be good to study so that you can adequately describe these 18 points. Um, this presentation overall probably should take you 30 minutes to go through. Um, and what's important, when you get to this part of it, you should have already done um, some questioning of the client or the sellers prior to this. So you have already have a perspective knowledge about what they think a realtor should do to sell a home. What, are, what is the marketing they think you should do so when you get to this point, you can then spend the appropriate time highlighting exactly what I call the hot buttons. If a owner of property bought their home from an open house, they truly, truly believe that an open house is very important because that's how they ended up buying a home. So when you then talk about doing an open house, you need to be detailed about it because that's going to be important to them and that's how they're going to choose you. Um, if you blow off the idea of having open houses, you likely will not earn that business. So that's critically important. So let's talk about these things. They're numbered. So team approach. Okay, so you may be saying to yourself right now, well, I'm only one agent, I'm working solo. Um, do not have a team. That's actually not true. You have a team. I am part of your team as your support person. I help you with your business every day. So I'm a part of your team. Your admin in your FLR office is a part of your team. That person also plays a role in helping you with your documents and things that you need to do. So they're a part of your team. <clears throat> Who else is a part of your team? Your preferred mortgage lender person is a part of your team. Your preferred title person is a part of your team. Um, what's important about a team approach is the fact that you are displaying that there's multiple people that are part of my business that are together collectively helping you with the goals you have about selling your property. So you do have a team um, and, and what's you know, you're describing to them as far as um, the primary person that's communicating with you, that's me. I'm your go to person, but you have an entire team when you choose me. <clears throat> so let's move forward. Photography, very, very important. Photography is absolutely the first thing, um, uh, the first component of any marketing piece that the consumer or the buyers are going to look at. And if they are appealed by the photography, then they're going to go further. If they're not, the photography don't stand out and speak to them, I like that. 
then they're just going to move on to another property. So photography happens to be very critical. Now, um, if you are able to see, I don't know if you can see my mouse pointer, but in the photography one, <clears throat> in the upper right corner, you'll see a red star. You go over to the, um, the last one on the top column, the 800 info where the lady's um, on the phone in her car. In the upper right corner, you see a star. <clears throat> Those particular slides are actually programmed where you can, um, if you're using a touchscreen device, you can just touch the picture, the photograph, <laughs> excuse me, um, and it will take you to a more descriptive slide about photography. So since photography is so critical, I think that for sure, almost every time you click on this, and I'm going to do that so you can see how this works. So I'm going to click on it. <clears throat> and so now it says showcase photography. Professional photography increases buyer showings by more than 200%. The source of this information is the National Association of Realtors 2017. Now I show four images. On the left, it says what others do. On the right, it says what we do. So if you want to look at this, the, the property, or I'm sorry, the photos on the left, what others do, we're actually taking with a smartphone. Um, smartphone does not have the ability to um, take pictures the way that we need to for the properties that we're um, representing and selling. Um, the photos on the right were done by a photographer, a professional photographer. This is the exact same home. And I think that all of us can sh look at this and say, what a difference. I mean, the biggest one that stands out, obviously, is the pool. That's the same pool. The pool on the left looks foggy. It looks smaller. The pool on the right looks like I want to jump in there and swim in it. It's beautiful. It's clear. It's large. It just it just says something a lot bigger. If you look at the photo right above that, um, the room with the pool table. If you look at the one on the left, notice how the uh, through the doorway there it's all washed out. That's because the lighting. Um, you, you need certain type of lighting with your camera equipment to prevent that from happening. You cannot do that from a smartphone. Um, the one on the, the right, obviously, very clear. And the photographer is more talented to understand that uh, the angle of the photo is um, going to increase its um, worth as well. The actual front elevation of the home, the one on the left, the, the sky is all washed out, the one on the right. It's vivid blue, got some clouds going on. Just shows off so much better. Um, so I've talked a lot about this in a different way than if I was actually talking to the seller, but I want to speak so you understand um, what you need to do in sharing this information. So now that you've described and show and tell, uh, show and tell about the photography, you can click anywhere on the slide and it takes you right back to where you were. So you can see the values of being able to, to take certain elements of this marketing plan and go in deeper to better enhance the understanding of the, the, for the seller, but also feed into what they may want to see more of. So that's what's important. So let's move forward. Uh, drone photos. Obviously, um, this can't possibly be an adequate service for a home that's only priced in the under 100,000 range. Um, if you look there, there is an asterisk. So the asterisk says subject to specific requirements. So that is totally up to you to decide what that is. Um, and you know, if you're not going to do any drone, drone photography, you know, you'll just have to base it on certain style of homes. If it's a price range requirement for you, then then describe that. So, however, um, drone photography is amazing, and it will give a whole new dynamic to 
the ability to sell that property, especially if um, certain elements are involved. And I'll give you a couple examples. If it were on a lot with a, you know, an, an extreme valuable conservation behind it, um, a drone photography or drone video or I'm sorry, photos would really show that off or if it's on a golf course or it's on waterfront or it's a substantial piece of acreage, um, drone photography would make sense to include in the marketing piece. Okay, so we move forward, large yard sign. So um, again, a yard sign, we already said the second most um, valuable marketing um, thing would be to do a yard sign. So we want the consumer to know that we have nice big posts. We put big large signs in their yard so that there's an opportunity to capture that segment of buyers. Um, if you look at the photo with the yard sign, you'll see that it shows a little red and white rider at the bottom. <clears throat> that little red and white rider is one of our pre-recorded 800 info system uh, rider signs that you can obtain from your office. Um, that is an investment that you would make for that service. But I'm going to tell you, it will make you lots of money because you're going to get a lot more buyer calls from the yard sign or the drive-by buyers. And I'm going to show you exactly how that system is works if you're not familiar with it. So um, you'd obtain the signs that is a cost to you, but the service is no cost. And the sign can be moved from listing to listing. As you close one, you can use it again on another listing. Um, so let's talk about that. So on the top row, all the way to the right, 1-800-INFO-SYSTEM. What is that? If, again, this has a red star, so I can click on it, and now it blows up, and I can now just go right through it and describe exactly what this does to, or this, uh, I can describe this to the seller. So we put a, a little rider out, has, it says pre-recorded information, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I usually would have a small conversation about the fact that, you know, buyers don't necessarily always freely just call realtors because they're the salesperson but they will call that because it gives them a way that it's perceived that they can get the information. Um, and so if they're interested, they'll call that. I'd rather them do that so that I have an opportunity to speak with them than have them just write down your address and go online and never have that opportunity. So let me describe how this works. They call that 800 number, they put that extension, that extension is, um, is only for your property um, so that they will begin to listen to a message that describes some details about the property itself. But what's magic about this is I will then get a text message instantly on my phone as they're still in front of the property, and it will identify to me their caller ID information. It will provide me their name and the phone number they just called from. And so my job will be now is to call them back immediately um, allowing them time to listen to the message. The message are probably 30 seconds long. At the end of the message, it does um, um, greet the caller the ability to press zero and speak to you directly, which would cause your phone to ring. However, if they hang up, your job would be to call them back, engage with them, try to qualify them, see if this is the right property. And so if you look at the image on the right, it says, I qualify them and share your home. And so you're, you're really reaching out to as many buyers as you can and trying to persuade them to see the home, assuming that they are qualified and meet the requirements. <clears throat> and again, after you describe this in detail, you click anywhere and it takes you entirely back to where you left off. So you kind of see where the values of being able to top deeper into any of these particular subjects. <clears throat> okay, so now we're on the bottom row. Realtor MLS, I don't think I have to speak too much about that. That's pretty much common. And, um, you know, for the majority of the real estate agents in the marketplace, they solely 
rely on that for the marketing of the client's home versus all of this that we're showing you now. <clears throat> Property flyers, obviously we um, provide you through our back office system the ability to create, it, it actually automatically creates the property flyers for you. Um, would be very beneficial that you always have some samples. So as you take a new listing on, um, you know, especially a nicer home, to keep some spare copies of those flyers and have them available to you so you can say, you know, it, it basically at this point you could pull one out and say, here's what a property flyer looks like. Then a custom website. Um, each of our properties actually is given a dedicated uh, URL website for it, and this is done through Imprev, and then we have another product through our smart lead capture system in the back office that also creates a proprietary custom website of their property. So it only features their property and doesn't mix it up with other properties, so it gives it more significant um, focus from consumers and then you're going to broadcast that out through different uh, marketing such as the next um, thing I'm going to speak about is social media. Um, so this you're going to talk about this based on where you play a role in using social media as an agent for the customers that you have. So if you use Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever they are, you need to speak um, intelligently as you can about how you embrace social media and the opportunity to broadcast and market their property. <clears throat> then leading websites. So um, we, through syndication, you got homes.com, realtor.com, truly Azul. Those are highlighted there. Um, there are other websites that, that aren't as prominent, but again, this is another slide, actually the social media slide or the social media and the leading websites both have a, a red star. So if I want to talk about this more, I can come to this page and basically it shows an image with a lot of website names there. Um, and, and you can refocus if you look at the, the couple right above that 86% shop homes online, remind them of that. <clears throat> and so your home will be, Put in Zillow, Realtor.com, TruliaHomes.com, thousands of other websites. So this includes other agent websites, all the other brands and such. So yeah, you can describe that in more detail. <clears throat> so this is only 10 of the marketing points or 10 things that you're going to do. So at this point, if I click anywhere on this slide, it will take me to the remaining eight. Okay, so <clears throat> video tours, um, the Imprev product that we invest into that's available um, to you actually creates video tours directly from the data from MLS. If you go into your Imprev account and set your YouTube channel uh, login and, and password settings, when it creates a YouTube, I'm sorry, a video tour of your listing automatically, it will automatically push it right into YouTube as well. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. If you want to automate, that would be a, a certainly something you want to do. Once you have a, a really dynamic property that you have listed at some point, you uh, we can assist you in downloading one of those tours and embedding it into the slideshow. So I'm gonna kind of show an example because this one again has a red star. So I'm gonna click on it immediately. You can hear the music, it's interactive. And this is one of the, the uh, videos that was created by Imprev on a, a smaller property. So I'm not sure if you can still hear me, um, but anyways, um, we can in, embed, so by default, the video I just showed you is embedded in the copy until you have one of your own. But um, again, so this, this, um, this version of the presentation, it has a lot of interactive 
components to it. And then even the music and the video and everything else can be truly shown off. Digital Magazine, um, again, another exclusive product. Um, this will really show you off in a big way because it's literally a magazine um, in the web. And it's a property magazine called Guide to Florida Homes. And that's actually the domain name, very, very key. Um, in this slide, you show them that it's being marketed throughout the major cities throughout the entire United States and then some Canadian cities. Um, so there's a distribution of about 100,000 per month. There is an image here. Um, if you're connected to the internet when you're sitting in front of the client, you can actually click on this and it will take you to the live um, digital magazine right online. Um, but you do have to have an internet connection. You do not have to have an internet connection to show the slideshow from a device. You just have to have the file on the device. And I can click anywhere and it takes me back to the rest of these just listed uh, mailings. Um, again, uh, the MPAD product that we invest into for you has um, a service where it automatically creates a just listed postcard. Um, it is intuitive for you to consider sending those out. That is a cost that you would incur for the printing of the postcard and the distribution of the postcard. But it's 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 relatively inexpensive. I think it's if you do smaller quantities, and these postcards are jumbo postcards, by the way, it's like 80 cents a piece with delivery. Um, but this will lead to more, what, more business, more listings, because the people that are, are getting it um, likely may call you. So I can tell you that there's numerous stories or testimonials from our agents that got additional business because of these postcards. This is a service for the seller, um, but it's also a service for you. And it's not that tremendously expensive compared to the value that it gives back. Mega open house. So um, didn't just say open house, this says mega open house. So mega open house is doing something more than the typical agent. Um, it does have a star, so we can click on it. <clears throat> and it says here, my mega open house event. So we don't call it just an open house, it's an event. My mega open house event attracts four times more buyers than a typical open house. Our mega open houses, house events, aggressively, aggressive marketing strategy attracts the most local qualified home buyers who are ready and qualified to make a buying decision. So then below that, it says, you know, some bullet points about how you have a mega open house. I share it with the neighbors, have an image of somebody knocking on the door. And that's really, if you take our open house class, that's what we teach you. We teach you to go around the open house through the neighborhood and share it door to door. Um, guess what that does? It uncovers more leads for you. Um, and, and there's, again, tremendous amount of testimonial that stands behind that but this is what's going to impress the homeowner as well. Promote by email. So you can send out an email solicitation to people in your contacts and let them know about your open house. The Imprev product automatically makes a very nice uh, email piece that you can send out to promote an open house. Promote in social media. Again, that's another um, dominant way of promoting an open house through groups and social media like Facebook. Um, and again, the Imprev product actually makes a marketing piece that you can push right through social media. And so you don't have to design anything for this. Promote online, that's no more than what the last one says, promoting MLS. If you put your open house date and times in the MLS system, it will feed that data out through the syndication such as Zillow and Realtor.com will be um, noting that you have an open house event. So that's very important to do. 
and then more directional signs. Um, it, it, we have um, proven the fact that if you put multiple signs at major intersections, you're going to increase your traffic dramatically. Um, so you're putting a little bit more than the average agent. You don't just put one at the corner. You may put one in the um, inside streets of the community, but on the major arteries, you want to put uh, multiple signs. So there's no doubt people are capturing this, getting their attention and directing them to you. So here again, you can blow up and talk big about open houses. If it's not something, you may have a seller says, I really would not never want you to do an open house. So you certainly wouldn't click on that and go into big detail because that's something they've already told you they weren't interested in, but you can. Home search app. So every Florida luxury realty agent has a home search app and they share it with multiple buyers in our Tampa Bay marketplace. And your seller's listing will be featured in the mobile app. And so that's another little tool that you want to tell them about. Top 300 agents, now I'm at the bottom left. The top 300 agents, what is that? What we have done is we have created a, um, a, a Facebook group called My New Listings Tampa Agents. And we solicited to agents in the marketplace, and they're not generally all for luxury realty agents, but agents that we know out there that are really doing a good business. So they tend to add most of the volume of leads. And so that's where that plays a role. So you can post your listing right in that group and it instantaneously is now being noted to those top 300 agents. The brokerage agents, um, you can do that through our own um, Facebook group, the company Facebook group, the discussion board. You can promote your listings on there and, and the agents within the brokerage are being um, noticed on your listings. So that's how that works. National exposure. Um, this one has a star, so let's click on it. So this is a very, very powerful thing. I can tell you this was probably one of the, the things that I spoke about when I listed homes where I competed with other agents that almost always got me the business um, in regards to that. So what does this say? My marketing on their website. So it's showing some of the franchise brands, correct? Century 21, Keller Williams, Realty really Executives, Colwell Baker, Berkshire Hathaway, etc. So we already know that when you put the home in MLS, is syndicating and your homes are going on these branded websites. So, but what happens is um, the agents, when they're taught within these brands, so if you take a Remax agent, Remax agent is going to go out and really heavily promote his Remax.com website as a tool that's going to succeed at selling that homeowner's property. And then the Century 21 guy is going to come in and do the exact same thing, promote the Century 21 website as a place that's going to be marketed, and that's what's going to sell your home seller. Um, and then when you come in and you're like, so I just want you to know, I am a Florida Luxury Realty agent. Obviously, we have some of our own websites and stuff, but what I'm going to do for you, homeowner, is I'm going to make sure you're on that Remax.com website. I'm going to make sure you're on that Century 21 and then all of these others. Um, and what's most important, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, is that it's going to be my quality photos, my description, and I'm going to be totally in control of the market piece and I already showed you the photography that I'm going to do and the drone and, and, and such I'm going to do. So we're going to be everywhere. And this right here has helped me um, capture more listings than most of the other things I've already showed you because what they only were told by the competitors that I was competing with in the opportunity was push, push, push our branded website. 
So therefore, the perception of the seller was that they were only going to kind of push and exclusively put it in their website. They didn't really feed it out about the fact that it's going to be all over these other brands. And so if you're thinking about it, if I were competing where they interviewed me, a Remax agent, a Century 21 agent, they think the Century 21 agent's only going to kind of put it in Century 21. The Remax agent's going to put it in Remax, but I'm going to put it in all of them. And boom, it was an opportunity. So um, let's click, go back. So I basically described the 18-point marketing plan. I'm going to jump back just to see if everybody is still with me. Can somebody comment? Hola. Thank you, Michelle. Um, Wendy, does the second screen print in our book presentation, does the second screen print in our book? Uh, yes. And I'm going to go through that really good. Um, so am I doing good so far? <laughs> I need, they don't have red stars. They just have the pages. So it's not going to be that you can jump to page three from page one. They're in a certain order. So you kind of have to skip ones that you don't want to, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's go back. Okay. All right. So. Um, I should have asked a question, but I'll, I'll ask it afterwards, but I think um, if you go back when I started this and I said, think about if I was the agent and you were the seller at this point, let me go back. I want to ask that. Um, at this point, would you hire me? <sighs> Yes, I think you would because, and so that's what the, that's why you need to use this. This is why um, this will make a difference in the amount of business you, you earn is because there's no doubt that's so powerful that it, it, it just really just, it, it dominates over anybody else's presentation that they may see or hear from another competing agent. So when you want to earn a lot of trust in an opportunity with a seller, that seller must believe in you, must have a lot of faith in you, must feel that they're in amazing hands um, by choosing you. So this is kind of where this comes in. Um, so we, you, you need to, and, and so this screen has a lot of pictures. It just has four Titles, marketing in action, buyer showings, negotiating the sale, contract or closing. And all you do is you need to just talk about each one of these aspects. So what you're doing is kind of telling them, and, and you should speak in a way that you've already been hired. So what I'm, when we get started, um, I just want to kind of tell you how this all rolls out. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is schedule the, the, the photography, but I'm going to schedule it for about three or four days out because I want to come in here the day before and we're just going to kind of do a walkthrough and make sure the home is staged properly. Once that is done, the sign will be put out. I will be able to go back, pick the right, the correct pictures and begin the marketing immediately on the home. And so you just talk about it. You talk about it in tents that you've already been hired. Um, so when um, at that point, we should immediately be getting activity on the home um, and showing appointments. And what will happen is as soon as someone inquires with me that wants to see your home, I'm going to call you immediately, um, confirm that we're good with the appointment time. And then immediately after the showings, I'm going to inquire for feedback. And as soon as I get that feedback, I kind of want to know what would be best for me to do. Do you, can I give you weekly updates? Can I, um, do you want to know right away what the feedback is? What, what, what would be best for you? You need to be a little bit 
um, customizable to the client. And so this gives you the power to do that. And so you need to take notes here and, and attend to that. So I want you to understand um, when I get an offer on your home, this is how the process goes to negotiate. First of all, I will only really work with clients or, or work with opportunities where the um, we're going to request all offers in writing. So we really have a clear understanding of all the terms and not be thinking one thing and only focusing on the price such. And then I'm going to share that offer with you. I'm going to give you um, valuable insight on how we should respond. My job is to make sure we negotiate a contract that's solid as can be and doesn't have any holes in it that's going to um, potentially um, fail on us. So I'm going to really review everything. You're going to know it in detail as I go through it. And then at that point, we go into contract. If we succeed at negotiating successfully, then um, there's a lot that happens after we go into contract to the closing time. And I'm going to be there every step of the way. I play a role as a central coordinator of everything. And trust me, there's a lot of people involved. There's a home inspector. There's another agent. There's a title company, a mortgage company, an appraiser, a surveyor, a termite inspection. Um, and it's my duty to make sure everyone is on task with where they need to be at the time they need to be there and that this thing is moving forward. I take, I take emotion out of this and I put logic in place and I'm gonna play a role to make sure that this thing succeeds all the way to closing and that that occurs so that it's as smooth as possible and everyone is pleased with what's going on. So you just gotta describe all this. By doing this and taking that time, again, you're building immense trust and belief in what you're doing and knowing what's going on and, and that you've got them and you care about what's going on. Um, and that's gonna go a long ways. So now the next slide is determining current market value. So this one, again, you take time to just give them a summarized um, of how a CMA is basically done or how market value is determined. And what you're going to do by doing this is build immense trust and belief from the sellers. Um, the whole goal here is that they, they find or make a mental determination that you're, um, you really know what you're doing. And when they feel that and realize that, what are they going to do? They're going to trust in what you're telling them is good, solid um, information, and they're more likely to just follow your lead. And that's what the goal is because it's really what you're doing. Um, but what happens is somebody will just jump in. Well, let me just show you a couple comps and let me show you what you need to, you need to price your home at. But by taking the time and doing this. So um, what, how we determine value um, where your market value on your home is, is we, we look at your location. So location can be affected by, um, you know, the lot. Is the lot got conservation behind it? Does it have a back of another home behind it? Is it on a waterway or is it in a golf? Or got a golf course? Um, is it a corner lot versus an inside lot? Is it on a cul-de-sac versus um, near the main road? And those play a factor. Certain lots will have more value than other lots or locations. Features, you know, and, and I have to look at your features. I have to, you know, do you have a pool? Um, don't have a pool? Um, is, it, is there um, updates in the home? Um, as you have you re well the next one is, is condition but is there updates is there special features and and all those play a role in determining value condition you know I we have to look at how well it's been maintained how pristine it it, it shows today 
Um, condition also are factors about the age of the roof and the age of the AC system, the age of the appliances and all those things are um, um, determinators on the value based on condition and then time frame. In, in some of this, um, I can't state it right because um, you should have already done some questioning before you even go to do this presentation. Because what I would be able to say here is um, when we spoke on the phone, I asked you and you said the AC was last replaced in 2011. Is that correct? Um, because that's how I would come to these condition factors um, and be able to relate to information that I had obtained from them. And then time frame, you know, if you have to sell this, you know, quicker, we have to be more aggressive with price. If you have some time, then we can we can go with average price, um, and and that all plays a role. So I look at all these factors, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, um, and that's how we turn determine market value or a pricing strategy for your home. <clears throat> okay, so this one now. Um, is actually showing some pricing stuff. So think about that idea that you can go now and kind of show them how this works, how pricing right is very important, how to strategically price the home. And then after this presentation, you're actually going to show them the CMA you uh, prepared. If you use the, um, templates from our back office system, these exact um, charts are in the pricing page when you say you suggest a market value range for their home, this same chart is in that page. Therefore, it's very relate, relative and they will trust it more. But, so let's describe this page. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, um, it's important that your home is priced correctly in order for it to succeed at selling. And where we, the, the magic thing is, is where we're going to see 60 to 90% of the buyers. We don't want to necessarily see a hundred percent of the buyers because we're not underpricing your home. We're not looking for investors, but if we go overprice, then as you can see, we're losing the buyers that will probably be most interested in your home. So there is a, a magic number or magic range that we need to be within. And so what, um, if you look to the right, you'll see the little um, icons and it says view marketing, asking price, needs and desires and request to show. So the way to describe this is the fact that um, we're going to, I've already shown you the 18 marketing points that I'm going to use for marketing your home. And that's going to put your home out there. It's going to broadcast a huge net. It's going to be uh, viewed by um, almost every buyer in the marketplace. But when they look at that ad, they're going to look at the asking price and they're going to look at the product, your home, and they're going to tell themselves, does that make sense? Does the asking price and the, the home itself, is that the right price? Is that overpriced? Is that the right price? If they don't believe in the price, they're not going to do the right, they're not going to request to show. So what I will be doing is I will be bringing you reports on all the activity on my marketing and showing you that so many visits and so many hits and all this stuff. But if we're not getting showing appointments, that's the market telling us that we didn't price it right. Um, and that's why it's critical. And that's if we go 3% above market, we're already out of range. And if you look at the red box there, the most critical time that your home must be priced right is within the first 15 days. Within the first 15 days, I think this is actually in the next slide, um, that's when the activity is heavy. 
buyers are seeking to see the new listings that hit the market and they're they want to run and make an opportunity at them and if you look at the arrow that goes across the screen here as you can see it drifts downward it's going to be that's the buyer interest in and as you time goes on buyer interest drops because buyers question the property you know why has it been on the market 100 days what's wrong with it so it sends a signal to them mentally that something may be inferior about that home because no one's buying it so successful marketing strategy um, again this one really shows the 15 day thing so why price is so important is it, from the get-go is because that 15 day window and you can see significant drop off after that the showing demand will be extremely high in the first 15 days, but if the product and the price don't match up, then we're um, less likely to succeed at getting this home sold. And as time goes on, it gets it, it gets further and further away from the opportunity, um, almost forcing us to price it lower than what we could have achieved if we priced it right in the beginning the majority of the buyer interest occurs during the first 15 days and then it drifts from there um, so at this point we are basically done with the presentation this is delivering the difference um, and then this is the end page um, but this is at this point is where um, and at points throughout the presentation i probably could have spoke more like an agent because after I got done with the 18 point marketing plan, I'm just gonna tell you, I normally would ask, and this is kind of what we call a soft close. So do you think this is the marketing plan that will actually sell your home? Do you think this will get your home sold? And those, those teaser questions in between and confirmation will help guide you if they were objective of anything or maybe they felt there was something that was missing out of it, then that would be your opportunity to say, so, you know, um, obviously I missed something or you know, you, you think something differently than what I shared. Could you share that with me and let me handle that? So those are objection handling skills. But at this point, when you get to this slide, I need, you know, what do you think, da, da, da. And then you would move into, so let's talk about um, let me share with you the CMA and show you um, where your market value is, and then you would go on to that. So let me see if there's questions at this point. Uh, Scott, I have a question about the pre-marketing related to the article in Realtor Magazine. Can you elaborate? I'm, I'm not familiar with the um, Realtor Mar Magazine article. Um, let me, let me see if this doesn't look so crazy. There, okay, so let me ask, answer a couple questions. Then I'm gonna jump in the new back office and show you a couple more things. So it says, Margaret says, I have a question about the pre-marketing related to the article in Realtor Magazine. I'm not familiar with the article. Um, we do have some pre-marketing stuff in our new back office. Um, uh, in my listing class, which is different than this one, it's all about the skill set from the point of almost talking with the seller to set a listing appointment to going to the appointment. And one of the things that I personally feel you should not do, you wouldn't want to print this out and give it to somebody prematurely because, and this is why I feel this way, you're, you're going to have almost every time you sit with sellers, you're going to have objections. If you give them everything that you do in advance you're not there you're not there to defend your objections and handle the objections 
And if they're going to interview multiple realtors, they now have been provided the information in written format and less likely feel that it's necessary to actually meet with you. Um, so that's a very dangerous thing to do, in my personal opinion, to give them all of this information without you being there to present it. Um, I think it will um, prove that you'll lose a lot of opportunities. You want to land the appointment and then reserve as much as you can until you're in front of them and then provide the information and be able to handle the objections and questions and what ifs and what everything else. That's how you're going to get the business. So um, there's this concept that it may um, save you time. I think your time is well spent. If you've spent two hours with people and delicately went through and gave them a really good presentation. So um, let me now pop into the new back office. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I just want to make sure people can see this screen. I'm going to pop back and ask that question. Okay, uh, I bet you can't. Okay, let me go back here. Okay. Okay, um, I'm in the back office system. I need to know, can you see that? Somebody? Okay, perfect. All right, very good. I'm going to go back. Okay, so I'm actually logged in. And so um, when you're logged in here, you have a pull down of my marketing. So you have my listing presentation. So this one um, creates a PDF version. PDF version is designed to be printed to eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, put into a beautiful three ring binder, something more than, you know, something more upscale. Um, I have uh, most of our offices, um, the um, broker managers have samples of what a nice one would look at. Um, I think the where we get them is Office Depot and they're like 12 bucks or something. Almost look like leather with a nice cover. Um, so anyways, the contact information is shown here. Um, it should be pulling it from the database, represent who you are. Your bio that you created will show here. Then we have a generic bio. Generic bio is more um, seller only oriented. So, but this is actually what's gonna show up on the, on the actual presentation. So if I click generic bio, then I just click create listing presentation down here. It's telling me that it's generating it will automatically download. And then down in the bottom left corner is the presentation. So if I open it up, here it is. So um, if you get the nice binder that has the clear cover, you uh, effectively need to print this first page twice because you want one to show on the cover. And then in order for the inside presentation um, to be appropriately organized, um, you would want to put the, the cover again in there, and then it would open to these pages. So this is the order of the pages. Uh, Wendy asked a question about, you know, the the more elaborate pages, like when you, uh, in the digital presentation, we could uh, click on the photography and go into a more vivid description of the photography. Those pages are in here, but 
obviously there's you can't click on a book so you just have to know that you're going to flip to this page eventually but all these are in here as well so you can see you got all of those pieces of this so it's really um, pretty much consistent with the digital one but um, these you can see there's a lot more text so this text would be the thing to study for when you're presenting that's kind of what your description of each one of these are and you need to summarize it and do it in your own words um, but that's the entire presentation in in the pdf um, we can't make the digital ones create like that so you have to ask your office admin to give you a digital version the other thing um, Margaret or Leanne Carr asked me about uh, pre-listing uh, marketing, I think pre-marketing or something, but if you go to my marketing and seller handouts, this, a lot of this is stuff that you should have with your CMA, um, but there's also pieces in here that would be okay to give somebody in, in a little bit in advance to uh, the um, appointment, I guess. Um, there's one here, it's the values of hiring a real estate agent. That's this one right here. Um, I don't think we're gonna be able to blow it up and read it. No. Um, I suggest you print all these out. As you can see, there's check marks. So the check marks will represent which ones you uh, want. Um, these are not appropriate for uh, all of these for the listing appointment. So you need to kind of print them out, learn them and figure out which ones are more appropriate. There's uh, the first impression, page one and page two. That's a really nice leave behind. They help the uh, customer do a few things to make their home more showcase. Just gives them some tips and ideas. Um, the second one here is comprehensive marketing plan, the 18 point marketing plan. You can actually use this as a checkoff sheet and each you and the, the seller could sign it. And it's basically a confirmation of these are the, the things I'm going to do to market your home. Um, so if drone isn't one of them. You wouldn't check that off. Um, this one here, basic marketing plan. Um, please understand this is only a, only shows six things that you do for marketing. Um, this was really kind of created for a, sort of a different purpose. Um, maybe you have that, that seller that's just gonna stand and not agree to hire you whatsoever, 6% commission, what you deserve. Um, should you want to, you could, and this is a skill set thing, and I'm gonna uh, kind of describe it. Um, you could utilize this to help you re-engage um, your commission at least 3% or basically negate and only give them six, six, uh, a six point marketing plan instead of an 18 point if you have to take a discounted commission. Um, however, and I'm gonna use some skill set here. So I would keep some of these in my, my um, briefcase or whatever I carry with me. And so if I got into that situation, I'm going to really convert them into paying me the commission I deserve. So let's say they, you know, say that, um, you know, Joe at Century 21 was only going to charge me 5% and you're 6%. I would first flip back to the 18 point marketing plan and say, you know, I just want to, you know, ask you, first of all, is Joe doing all of this stuff for you? Um, probably not. Um, so then if I needed to skill set wise, um, try again to get my 6%, I may say, well, so you understand that that commission is generally shared equally between my, my brokerage and the buyer's agents broker. So you're okay if the buyer's broker or an agent gets two and a half percent. We, we, we agree there because half of 5%, if we're only going to charge 5% or you're only going to pay 5%, two and a half percent will go to um, Florida Luxury Realty and two and a half percent would go with XYZ Realty, buyer's agent realtor. 
Um, so let me ask you this. I really hate to not do my full marketing because I know how powerful it is, how it's going to earn more opportunity to sell your home quicker, um, get buyers in here that's going to pay more money for your home, all the positive things. Um, so, you know, otherwise I'm going to have to go with this basic marketing plan. We're going to have to cut out a bunch of stuff. Um, but then I would probably say this. So if you're willing to pay two and a half percent to the buyer's agent, I would rather do my 18 point marketing plan. Can we do this? I get 3%. I do the 18 point marketing plan and the buyer's agent gets two and a half percent. So we're at five and a half percent. Can we compromise to that point? Therefore, I don't have to cut any of this out. You still get full blown marketing and um, the agent that you were only wanting to give two and a half percent would still get two and a half percent. Can we do that? Typically that will work. Therefore you're still getting your full 3% commission for the listing side um, as well. So there's different techniques and that's really a different class, but I just wanted you to realize uh, um, the, the use of some of these pages because you really wouldn't hand that to every seller that would not be a good idea. Um, can I describe anything else? Let me go back and see. Any questions? 